saltiness isn't bliss, the recipe of the day is a dessert ball. So this is something quite a bit different than I featured on the channel before. Uh, kind of excited to give it a try and see how it turns out. So we want to start with eight ounces of just a regular standard uh, size cream cheese that we have softened. You want to put it in a bowl that you'll be able to use an electric mixer with. If you don't have an electric mixer, make it work for you. You can always use a spatula, a spoon, whatever you've got handy. To that, we're going to add a half a cup or one whole stick of unsalted butter that is softened. And as you can see, mine melted a little bit. A tip, guys, uh, to get your butter to soften quicker. I took my whole stick, I cut it into small little squares and then I just popped it in the microwave for a really short amount of time. Cutting it down like that kind of helped to soften and melt it a little bit quicker. So that is a half a cup, one whole stick. Last ingredient is one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And now we are going to mix that up and we will add some more things in once we're done. So. Just start on low, your cream cheese, your butter, it's all gonna fight you a little bit in the beginning. So just kind of take your time, be patient with it. It'll start to cooperate the longer you mix it. And you will just blend that until it's nice and creamy. All right, so after just a minute or two, there we are with our cream cheese mixture. Next up, we're gonna add in a couple of sugars. So we've got a quarter cup of brown sugar. And then we've got, I don't really have an exact measurement on this because I had to kind of make a homemade batch, but we want powdered sugar. Um, this is probably about an eighth a cup, maybe just under that. So we're gonna pour that in. And then just like we did with the cream cheese mixture, we're gonna put our mixer on low and we're gonna blend that in and mix it until it's all blended and smooth. All right, last couple steps before we're gonna pop this into the fridge. So there it is with our sugars mixed in there. We are gonna add a half a cup to three quarter cup of mini chocolate chips. And then we're gonna add some toffee bits. So I had a very hard time finding toffee bits in the store. Even when I went online, I could only get them in large quantities. So I just did what I was able to do with what I had. I took these little Heath bars, I took my meat tenderizer, and I just pounded and chopped up about five little Heath bars. So half of this is gonna go in here now. The other half we're gonna reserve for later. And guys, if you can't get your hands on some toffee, you can always substitute anything else for that or make it work like I did uh, with something that has toffee in it. And now we're just gonna mix that up by hand and we're just gonna blend all those sweets into our cheese mixture. Once we get that thoroughly mixed and blended, or evenly I should say, <laughs> Um, we will refrigerate this for about an hour, anywhere between one to two hours. That looks all blended. So you're just going to cover your bowl or you can transfer it into another bowl if need be. Put a lid on it, put some kind of cover on it, and refrigerate it. I'll see you in a bit. Real quick guys, I did want to mention if you're curious uh, how I mixed and made my homemade powdered sugar. I took four of these little cane sugar packets, so I guess it was cane sugar that I used. I had four on hand in the house, uh, poured those in a bowl, and then I did about a quarter teaspoon of cornstarch. Um, and I did the cornstarch an eighth a teaspoon at a time. So four packets of these, one eighth teaspoon of cornstarch, mixed it up, then a second uh, teaspoon, one eighth teaspoon of cornstarch, mix that up and it was just the right texture, just the right consistency I wanted. So just a little fun tip. Um, I really have never made homemade powdered sugar, so good to know that it just takes a couple simple ingredients from home. Okay guys, so our cream cheese sugary mixture has had a chance to firm up in the refrigerator. So now we want to transfer it out of our bowl or whatever kind of dish you had it in uh, while it was chilling. And we're gonna, I'm gonna set it on just a sheet of wax paper. You can uh, 
you know, improvise however you need to. So if you want to set it on foil, plastic wrap, a paper plate, anything that's just flat and smooth gets it out of the bowl. Before we move on to our next and last step, kind of just use your spatula, use your hands to just kind of shape it into a ball, which it should already resemble that kind of shape. Okay guys, so there's a bird's eye view of what I've done here. So wax paper on the right and then just spread my chopped mixture up across it. And then my cheese ball mixture on the left, gonna grab that. You'll see me do that in just a moment. Pick that up off the wax paper and roll it through all those tasty bits on the right. And then we will see how it looks. Okay, so picking up my cheese ball. Easier said than done. Maybe I should have left it in the fridge a little longer. Here it is. I'm flat on one side, so I'm going to kind of shape it a little better. And now I'm just going to roll it across. And that's going smooth. It's not keeping its shape as a ball, but <laughs> it's going smooth. Roll it what hasn't gotten enough of those bits on it. There we go. And you can even, like I said, guys, just try to pick them up with your hands and kind of press them into the cheese. That's another way to go. Use a spoon, use a spatula and put them on there. But here is kind of my end result. So that is what it looks like once we've added all those extra flavors on there, some of which we already had in there. And because this um, is still not quite as firmed up as I would like it, I am gonna pop it in the fridge for a little while longer, but you can decide what works for you. If you want it to be on the softer side or you need to serve it right away, go for it. If not, and you have time to pop it back in the fridge, I'm gonna let it set in there while I cook dinner. So then it will be even more um, firmed up and ready uh, for dessert when dinner's done and it's dessert time. All right, so here it is back in the dish that I had mixed all the last ingredients in and I'm just going to put that back in the fridge just to let it firm up maybe another 20-30 minutes. Um, after that, what can we serve our dessert bowl with you ask? Well, sky's the limit really and it all depends on your taste buds, what you have at home handy in the pantry, in the cabinet, in the fridge. Um, but these are just some of the ideas that I had. So once my dessert ball is all ready to go, I'm gonna transfer it to the center of this. I've got some cinnamon graham crackers, some pretzel sticks, shortbread cookies, plain regular graham crackers, and some vanilla wafers. So just some sweet and salty, but not too salty. <laughs> Things that will really, I think, go well with all the flavors that we have in our dessert, Paul. So thanks so much for watching. See you next time.